Welcome to our review of the Sane Logic SA9 Smart Weather Station. We had the opportunity to take a look at this weather station, set it up, and test it out, and we're going to share our thoughts with you along with a little bit of how we set it up. Comes with a lot of features. A lot of features that you get with some more expensive weather stations. The large color display is nice. It's pretty easy to install and set up, and it comes with the Weather Seat app. It does have a lot of good features to be able to remotely view your weather data and upload it to places like Weather Underground. So let's go ahead and unpack the weather station and look at some of the setup. Today we're going to unpack and take a look at the Sane Logic SA9 digital weather station with Wi-Fi capability. We're going to go through the process of unpacking it, taking a look at the directions, how to get this set up correctly, especially set up correctly to get the best weather data that you can get from this weather station. Okay, let's go ahead and get this open. We're not gonna spend too much time on this, but a couple of things to point out. When you get weather stations, it doesn't matter what brand or what level weather station you get at, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you spend some time before you set it up going through the directions. It'll save you a lot of heartache later. There's a quick setup guide, which is good. A lot of people will just take that shortcut and go right away. Here's the manual for the WeatherSeed app that you're gonna get on your phone. And then here's the user manual with all the details. And you're gonna to wanna to keep these in a safe place for reference because I can guarantee you're gonna to wanna to get them later. You could have a power outage, you may need to reset things. You wanna make sure you keep those manuals handy. Now, what is always exciting and fun is obviously the display unit. We'll take a look at that when we power it up later. And then make sure you keep yourself organized. Um, you're going to have the main unit that goes outside like this. We're going to go through the process of how to put the cups on. Also, how to uh, take care of the rain gauge, install the batteries, all of these things. But make sure you're organized. Keep the parts together. And when you have the parts together, whether it's the mounting bracket, this will be very important. We'll talk about mounting the weather station is critical to get the best data. You wanna put the weather station in a location that's gonna get the best wind information, temperature, and rain information. Then you have your power, you have your hardware. This will go into the rain gauge. Here's your hardware to put it together. You get a little screwdriver, which is always nice to have. Okay, the first thing we got out of the box is what we call the integrated sensor suite or the ISS. This is the brains, so to speak. This is where we get wind direction from. This is the rain gauge right here. This is the thermal hygrometer. This is gonna get your temperature and humidity. Right here, we have the antenna that's built inside. And right here, and this will be important when we go put it outside, this is a, a bubble level to help make sure that the weather station is level. That's gonna be very important for the rain gauge because if you don't have the station level, it will not adequately measure the rain. When you get to the wind cups, you're gonna notice a small rubber seal, a little gasket here. And I ended up getting a paper clip to help pull it out. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't lose this. So when you set things up like this, do it on a table to where things don't fall on the floor, make yourself a workspace. So let's go ahead and take out this little rubber gasket right here. And you're gonna to wanna to put this back in, so don't throw it away. This little rubber gasket right there. There's a screw inside of here that will then go ahead and mount on the post. And the screwdriver that you do get with your kit is good. You may also might wanna use a smaller screwdriver. It may get into the holes a little bit easier, but you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and screw that in and get the wind cups attached. So we push the spring mechanism down into there and then it locks into place. Now you're ready to go and catch rain and be able to catch the debris. Okay, we've got the outdoor unit put together. We're about ready to go and let's get it set up outside. However, I wanna caution you, you don't wanna do that yet. The display unit, which we're gonna go through here shortly, needs to be talking to this weather station before you put it outside. Make sure that this is reading weather data before you go climb on a ladder or put something up high in a pool where the weather station's going to go. You wanna make these communicate first indoors before you take it outside. So I've gone ahead and I've installed the batteries. After you install the batteries, 
you have this LED light. It's also labeled as reset. This will flash about every 16 seconds to let you know it's sending a signal. If you don't see that flashing light, you want to go ahead and hit the reset button and then it will start to flash again. And then you know that the weather station is now communicating. So we're about ready to power up the display unit. Before I get to that, on the back, you'll notice a battery compartment. It takes three AAA batteries. The battery unit here is used to be a backup. If there is a power outage or you don't have uh, power available, it will retain the weather data and keep the weather station communicating. So it's important to put three AAAs into there. So let's go ahead and get it powered up. Before we do that though, we're gonna remove this plastic film you will note though, there are very important instructions on how to make the Wi-Fi connection on this little plastic sheet here. You're gonna to wanna to keep that. But so we can see the weather data, we're gonna be able to pull this off. One thing we did is we like to test the distances between the outdoor unit or the ISS and how far that signal will travel indoors. We used our parking lot to be able to put the weather station out at different distances away from the outdoor unit to the indoor display unit. And we were able to figure out how far the signal went in our particular situation. So we did some experimentation, taking the outdoor suite further distances, closer distances. According to the manual, the wireless signal can go as much as 330 feet, but in most situations, about 100 feet. And that's what we found out. We put it out about 300 feet, didn't get a signal, moved it into 200, didn't get a signal. Then we got around 100, a little less than 100 feet, and then we got a good strong signal coming indoors. Like setting up the weather station, the Weather Seed app is something you want to look at the directions first before you download it and use it and take your time. If you rush through things, either setting up the weather station or setting up the app, you might find yourself getting a little bit frustrated. But go to the directions, especially the user manual, as the user manual here was a bit more effective than the quick startup guide. We've put together some suggestions for a better overall experience when installing your weather station. First of all, take your time. Make sure you have a plan. Plan first where you're gonna put the outdoor sensors Plan first where you're gonna put your indoor display unit because that's gonna save you a lot of time and effort later on and frustration. So take your time, plan ahead. Get the best wind data you can. Don't put under a tree next to a big wind block if you can. It's always a different situation in every environment. There's no one perfect place to put your weather station, but put it to where it's gonna catch the wind the best, the temperature the best, and the rainfall the best. Also, put it in a place to where you can get to the unit rather easily because you're going to have to change the batteries occasionally. And remember, your building, especially if it's metal, will reduce the effective signal strength between the outdoor unit and your indoor unit. Also, this is a common error. Make sure your weather station is communicating with the indoor unit before you go outside. You don't want to have to be outside and try to get things communicating. Make sure the solar panel in the northern hemisphere is facing south, north in the southern hemisphere, because if you don't, you're not going to be able to get that to effectively charge, and it's going to mess up your wind direction. So make sure you have a compass handy when putting your weather station outdoors. And make sure that weather station's level, if it's not, it will not be able to adequately measure the rainfall accurately. Also, we suggest that you use the user manual over the quick setup guide. It's really easy to go to that quick setup guide because you're in a hurry. You want to get that station up, you're excited. Use the user manual, go slow. These are some of the things we did not like about the Sane Logic SA9 Smart Weather Station. Some of these are nitpicks, but things to point out. First of all, the plastic mount, the mounting bracket, the post that goes into the bottom of the outdoor unit was extremely tight. It comes with a pre-drilled hole and a, and a screw to put it all together, but it was so tight we couldn't get the holes lined up to get the screw in. The battery door on the outdoor unit is a bit tricky. It's very hard to put back in place. It's kind of stiff, so you gotta take your time there. And this unit does really only have a max distance of about 100 feet. Now, this can vary depending on your situation. You might be able to get it to go out more than 100 feet, 
between the outdoor unit and the indoor unit, but in our situation, it was about 100 feet. And what that does is that limits you to where you can put the unit outside. That's why you want to take your time. Also, the manual suggests replacing the outdoor batteries every three months. This is a little cumbersome, especially if you got to get a ladder out or get up on a roof every three months. If you use lithium batteries, you're going to have a much longer battery life. So buy the better grade batteries, especially lithium, for the better experience. The Weather Seat app can be a little confusing at first. Again, it's like setting up the weather station. Consult the manual and take your time. Go slow. These are the things we liked about the Sane Logic SA9 Smart Weather Station. First of all, it's a straightforward setup. As we have mentioned previously, use the user manual over the quick setup guide. I know you want to get it going, you want to get it up fast, take your time. It synced up easy. When we tried to get the weather station that goes outside syncing up with the indoor monitor, it was pretty straightforward and it caught the signal pretty quickly. It has a very nice, easy to read display with lots of functions. And the weather data appears to be good. We compared the weather station data from the same logic SA9 to other weather stations that we know to be reliable nearby and they matched up very well. Also, the cost of this weather station is very good for the price. You get a lot of features for a relatively inexpensive weather station. We really recommend this station for the casual hobbyist who likes to track the weather. Whether you're a gardener, you just like to watch the weather, it's a fun weather station to get the rain, get the pressure, get the temperature, get the wind. We also really recommend this weather station for those of you that have a cabin, a second home, where you wanna monitor the weather from a different location to where you have that second home. Maybe you've got that condo in Arizona or that cabin in the mountains or that lakefront property and you want to know what the weather is doing. This station allows you to do it without breaking the bank.